Welcome to the Fantasy Thinker. I'm Jared Kodamich, and today we will be doing review of Stonewielder by Ian C. Elsamont. So I just recently finished this uh, third book in the novels of the Malazan Empire, um, the companion novels to the Mal Malazan Book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson, and this world created by Elsamont. And Erickson. Um, so uh, I'm going to keep this as non-spoiler as possible. It's kind of tough to do, you know, a non-spoiler review of, um, you know, a third book in a six book series as part of a 16 book conglomeration, <laughs> but we will do our best here. So uh, in this, uh, this novel right here, this was e Esselmont's third novel, and it really solidly confirms Esselmont's mastery of the Malazan world. Um, this, uh, this first, the first book seemed, you know, like a Knight of Knives, the first book, it seems like he was just getting his feet wet. And then uh, the second book, The Return of the Crimson Guard, kind of felt like he was in the deep end, but still like um, learning how to swim, you know, and uh, it was good, but this book here, this third book, shows uh, he not only can swim, but he's competing at a very high level. Um, that's how much I like this book. Uh, this story, it takes place on a new continent. It's uh, called Corel or Fist, the land of Fist, uh, depending on who you ask, <laughs> and which, which is awesome in and of itself, because that's just something that um, Esselmont plays with a lot because that's, uh, you know, it, he shows us that names and, and history, uh, are malleable and subject to the interpretation of not only, um, those who are like writing the histories, but also to those who are living it as well, you know? Uh, and so I like how that, you know, that's, that has a really, as somebody who reads a lot of history that has a realistic vibe to it, you know? Um, so, and, uh, so this is, um, you know, it's, he spells that out quite clearly. He reminds us that it's, it's something that, uh, that we need to remember really when we're reading any Malazan book or, um, any, any actual history book really for that matter. So, um, so I thought that that's really cool. You know, even, even the name Stonewheel, the, um, the person who is called that actually has like two or three other names. It's so it's really, it's really cool how it, how it all, he ties, he, he makes that apparent without making the naming convention confusing. And that, that was very well done. Um, the land, this continent there, the land that they're in, uh, this land, the, the land's religion is dominated by a being called, simply called the lady. Um, and this goddess, this, her power is absolute here. Um, and she's able to like to keep other gods at bay in the worship of other gods. And therefore other users of magic also have big problems. If they try to use magic, use, uh, access the, like the Warrens that we used to in the other Malazan books. Um, this lady, you know, she can snuff that stuff out or sniff it out and do something about it. And she, uh, so she has that kind of power in this land and these people worship her and she has the promise, her promise to the, to the, um, the people of this land is to keep these alien storm riders at bay, keep them off their lands, keep them from running over their lands. Um, and so, you know, as part of their worship of this lady, uh, the people of this land, they set up this, this, um, this huge wall and this, these people called the storm God who are these great fighters and they keep out the storm riders. They fight them every season, all in the lady's name. And, uh, the whole wall situation is a little reminiscent. You'll get, you'll kind of get the, um, song of ice and fire vibes from that um and so it's uh you you feel that but it's it's different enough 
Um, and it's not as uh, like metaphorically dominating as as Martin's work is in you know Game of Thrones and Song of Ice and Fire books. Um, so you get that little bit going on, uh, but there's there's a lot more going on in this book here as well. Um, there's some uh, familiar characters from the first his first two books, um, and as well as some uh, as well as some like drop-ins and mentions of other characters from all the Malazan series. Um, and of course, it wouldn't be a proper Malazan book if you weren't introduced to a whole bunch of new characters. <laughs> and so, and they're ver they're all very interesting. They're fleshed out very well. And um, so that, that, you know, that's, that's typical of a Malazan book. And, and it was enjoyable as well in this case uh so with there being the you know the one dominant goddess in this area uh of course faith becomes a major theme in this book um so i'm gonna read a little uh part from page 306 this is this isn't uh this is out of context so it's not gonna be spoilery or anything like that but what i the um the one thing I wanted to read here is some is how Esselmont explores faith through faith through this character, um, and this character is kind of this jaded mage, um, and uh, he uh, he's responding to somebody. He's uh, shaking his head, and um, and uh, he says so. Uh, somebody expressed to him that the storm guide cannot be defeated. And so he goes, so it's not so much faith as a bowing in submission to a greater power. Yet is there any distinction? Is not worship no more than a prettified, prettified effort at cringing ingratiation? Perhaps now is not the time for philosophical questions. Um, but and so this is a guy qu kind of questioning that that blind faith that these guys have in their lady and in their their protection of the of the storm god um and so truth and loyalty in this book is uh and what they represent are like also like strong themes in this book so i got um another example of that here um let me see here. Uh, yes, uh, there was um, there was a high mage. The, the Malazans, of course, are um, as part of the uh, part of the story here. The Malazans are involved, of course. You know, this is their. This is what this whole story is about, and so. Um, the, the, one of the high mages that amongst the Malazans there was uh, was uh, was you know questioning how they they're all giving her advice on how to ride, and she noticed she was never alone, and a number of them flank her all through the day, and they offer her stuff, um, and uh, the uh, and she questions one of the one of the soldiers about that, you know, and she's like, why are they all protecting me like this, and she says and the guy that the soldier tells her well they think you're the one defending them and she was like oh she kind of she's kind of taken aback by that and uh so you know and, and, and he's like hey it's okay calm down he you know he's back he says i've come to understand that the truth isn't really what's important what really matters is what people come to agree is the truth. And I found that just very interesting and, uh, you know, just very poignant for the, for the story being told here. And it's very relevant to, you know, to our world as well. So it's, I very, uh, I, I like that a lot. That was a great, uh, a great little passage there. Um, and uh and there's also some other th there's some other examples in this book of of uh also uh f faith other than religion based faith just faith in 
other people or faith in what other people are going to do in your in loyalty towards your your fellow soldiers and companions and the different ways in that which that loyalty works amongst um amongst soldiers even within an individual squad or as a unit as a whole and so i thought that was very well done by us these themes were tackled beautifully uh the last 200 pages just fly by um there was a great climatic standoffs and battles and other events to just wrap everything up nicely and uh gives us some surprising insight into the whole series and events in in the malas and book of the fallen as well um so there's uh yeah there was there was a quite a few revelations at the end of this book i was like oh wow that really adds to the whole story just in an excellent manner so that's so this book stonewell that is not one to be missed um if you if you if you are a lover of malazan if you like that world and you haven't read this book yet um do yourself a favor and pick it up it's it's a great book to read so that's my review today thank you for watching please like and subscribe and be good to each other thank you